Uh, this is Dr. Richard Bernstein. Welcome to Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Uh, today we're going to discuss more efforts by professionals to make high, high hemoglobin A1C values appear valuable or desirable. Uh, the latest trick is to publish numbers corresponding to blood sugars that are inaccurate when it comes to interpreting the A1C. Uh, for example, I know that uh, a hemoglobin A1C of uh, 5 corresponds to an average blood sugar of about 100 milligrams per deciliter. And uh, 6 corresponds to about 140 milligrams per deciliter. But the ADA has published a pyramid showing different numbers, and as the blood sugars get higher and lower, they show even uh, more erroneous numbers their blood sugar numbers tend to be quite low. So there's a ball game out there trying to make a high A1C seem like a lower blood sugar than it really is. Now, a formula was published a number of years ago in one of the ADA journals which accurately correlated A1C with blood sugar. How did I know that? Because I was doing the same thing at the time, and I was getting overnight blood sugars, that is during the night blood sugars, as well as daytime blood sugars on my patients. And I had thousands of blood sugars, and I plotted them versus A1C. Now, I was, uh, this is not a scientific uh, study that I was doing. I was just trying to find some uh, get some information for myself because I wanted to know uh, how to interpret A1Cs. This was done a long time ago. Uh, I will give you that formula right now. It was a perfectly acceptable and accurate formula. And it was published by the ADA. I keep the formula on a folder that's under my computer. And it reads like this. Mean plasma glucose, which they called MPG, equal 35.6 times the A1C, and that's all in parentheses, minus 77.3. More recently, a couple of years ago, someone managed to make a deal with the biggest seller of blood sugar meters. Uh, by that, what I really mean is these meters are the required meter by frequent, by, by many drug chains and many insurance companies. Uh, they're, the, they're the required meter when there's a restriction. And usually, uh, this relates to someone making money somewhere, whether there's payola or uh, just what's going on, to take a meter that happens to be very inaccurate and read quite low, well below the true values. Uh, and make that a required meter by many insurers and uh, chain pharmacies, uh, you know that something is suspicious. Anyway, the makers of this meter paid investigators to come up with a formula using their meters for blood sugar versus A1C. And they came up with a formula that uh, made the blood sugars look much lower 
than they really were because it was an erroneous formula using a meter that reads too low. It also is a meter that has a wide variation, so not only was it too low, it was uh, uh, too low but variable, so you couldn't just apply a correction factor. Uh, in any event, erroneous materials were used to create new guidelines for what is a given A1C value. And these are the ones that the ADA is advocating. And uh, yet another reason to ignore their guidelines. When they tell you go for uh, an A1C of eight or six and a half or seven, they're talking about a higher blood sugar than you think. If you use the formula that I just gave you, you'll get a more accurate reading of your blood sugar. So put right down the formula somewhere so that you'll be able to pro more properly interpret your A1Cs. Now there are other variables that affect A1C, such as, that can affect A1C, such as hematocrit, which is the concentration of red cells in your blood, uh, things like kidney disease, things like uh, thyroid status, and so on. So there, the A1C is not always a hard statistic in itself. It can uh, vary for reasons other than blood sugar. But the main point that I want to make right now is that the blood sugar, the official blood sugar guidelines are incorrect. And they've been copied all over the world. So the entire world has been plagued with erroneous numbers, thanks to uh, interests that are not the best interests of the patients. A truly normal A1C would be what you would see in a non-diabetic who's not eating the modern American high-carbohydrate diet. Uh, and that would be somewhere between 4.2 and 4.6 percent, giving us a, a blood sugar of somewhere in the vicinity of 80 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, I had A1Cs in that range uh, before I started getting uh, gamma globulin infusions for CVID. Uh, I have to shoot a little uh, higher now for technical reasons, but it's readily attainable. You have to, even if you take insulin, even if you're type 1 diabetic, I've heard uh, many uh, uh, people say that they were labile type 1 diabetics. What's labile means varying up and down. Uh, what's labile is the method of treatment. If you have a constant low-carbo diet with constant small doses of insulin, uh, small corrections, etc., you can get into that A1C range. And for type 2 diabetics, it's also easy, but they have to be able to control their overeating, and unfortunately, many type 2s are big on eating, uh, especially eating carbohydrates. So this is an attainable uh, value, 4.2 to 4.6. And I might add that certainly for children, uh, because uh, children have blood sugars in the 70s. Uh, pregnant women have blood sugars around 65. They could get lower than this, as can children. So that's the story. Uh, it's a good target. Not everyone can make it, but if you do what I just mentioned, you should be able to. Certainly read my book, uh, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution. Good luck and visit us again. Thanks. Uh, before you sign off from this session of Diabetes University, take a look at my book, Diabetes Solution, which uh, you can view at the site listed below, or you can purchase from any online bookstore. Also, visit my monthly seminars, teleseminars, 
Uh, the site for getting these free seminars is listed below. Um, you can also uh, join the Diabetes Forum where you can ask questions to other diabetics who have read my book and have been using it. And one last thing is if you go to the teleseminar, you can ask questions which I will answer, uh, if not the same month that you asked the question, uh, within a month or two thereof. Thanks.